The way that Minecraft is being developed for Java Edition is changing. This is a snapshot for 1.19.3, yet it has features of Minecraft 1.20 in it. Pretty confusing, right? So the way Java Edition is going to be developed will now be more in line with the way that Bedrock Edition is developed. Here I will refer to the creation of a new world where you can choose Experiments. This Experiments tab enables you to try out features that are currently in development. Here is what it looks like on Java Edition. You go into Data Packs and you can see over here on the left we have a bundle and update 1.20. And I think they can make this look a lot nicer if they added some custom icons into the menu. But this is what it looks like for now, and if you move these over to the other side, you will then be enabling these experimental features. And I do think that Bedrock looks a lot cleaner with how it's separated into its own experiments category here. I personally think it would make a bit more sense to have a button for experimental features, but the place to find them is in data packs. And when you click done, you're going to get this experimental features warning. You can click on details to see which ones have been enabled. And once you've created a world with these data packs, you'll now see that there is an experimental highlight. So what does all of this mean? 22W42A is a snapshot for 1.19.3. But with the inclusion of these data packs, we are also seeing parts of 1.20. So going forward, we can expect to see more intermittent minor updates like 1.19.3, 0.4, 0.5, etc. And so while the current game is being updated with quality of life changes, bug fixes and technical things, we'll also get to experience what the next update will be like as well. Then at some point in time, the snapshots will move over into the next update and the experimental features will no longer be data packs. These changes coincide with a commitment to synchronicity with the Bedrock edition of the game. Its betas and previews are now coming out on the same day with the same content it would appear. So hopefully I did a good job of explaining these changes. As we go through the video, I'm probably going to put something on the screen to let you know what the changes are for 1.20 or 1.19.3. And just before we get into it, more than 60% of you watching these update videos are not subscribed. It would be wonderful if you could do so, and that way you can keep up to date with all of the snapshots which I do cover here on my channel. The first thing I'd like to bring your attention to in this video is the creative menu. It's been overhauled in a really great way. There are new categories of blocks that have been set up, and this way I think it's much clearer to find the things that you want to find. If we look at the arrangement of blocks in the building blocks category, you can see it's so much cleaner to scroll through and find what you're looking for. And in general, everything's been clumped together in a really thought out manner that I think is just going to benefit building and finding what you need. And if you wanted a reminder of how it would normally look, well, you can see that the brewing category and the transport category have gone away and they've been merged into other ones. And there's overlapping of categories. For example, oak and spruce and all of the logs can be found in the nature tab too. Searching will now work sequentially through all of the different tabs. So as I search for something here, the ones in the first tabs take priority over the ones in later tabs. You will also no longer be able to find the petrified oak slab but it can still be obtained through the give command. And my final comment on this is why not use this space and this space down here to add in a couple of extra categories. The fact that items can be in multiple is really useful. All right then, next we move on to the chiseled bookshelves. You can see some of the front textures here. This is what the top is like, the side and the back are the same. And then over here, we've got the seven different states that you can have. And when you put in a book, it's going to remember where it was in the bookshelf. So the book and quill is the second one, then an enchanted book, another book and quill, an enchanted book. If you right click on this thing with an empty hand, you'll get the last book you put in back out, which was an enchanted one. Then we get this one here, the book and quill. And in case it wasn't clear, these are the only types of items you can actually put in the bookshelf. And as you might suspect, when you do this, it interacts with redstone. So for every book that we put in, the signal strength gets longer. As we take it out, it does come down, but it seems to be a little bit of a bug at the moment, as when we take out the last one, it still has one signal strength. You know, I actually think this works a little different than intended. It feels very counterintuitive, but notice how the signal strength didn't change. Right, you have to do two things in a row in order for it to change. Because now we've got one block left and two signal strength on the redstone. I've also noticed if you right click on it with a different type of item or block, it sort of just doesn't get used at all. If I click on the top with the flint and steel, 
it's not setting a light to the block. And yes, I learned this when I was doing some flame resistant tests. This block cannot be set on fire. Well, you can put fire on top of it, but it will never destroy the block. Now you probably wanted to know how this thing is crafted and it is as follows, six planks and three half slabs and you can do that with any wood type. And I bet some of you wanted to know how blast resistant this is. It is that much blast resistant. Next up is the bamboo wood set, which like me, I'm sure many of you are inspired to do some building with these gorgeous textures. We've got the bamboo mosaic, the bamboo planks over there fence posts, fence gates, and then over here you can see them with their connected block models. So much like other wood types, we get our stairs and our slabs, but also for the mosaic type two, we've got button and also pressure plate. And I believe these work the same as wooden pressure plates and buttons. Then we've got the sign over here. When you place it down, you can see the texture. We've got the trap door, we've got the doors. And uh, what's this over here? Yeah, the hanging signs. We will come back to those in a moment in a little more detail. For now, you're probably wondering how to craft this stuff. It's pretty straightforward. Four bamboo gives you one of the bamboo planks. And then to make the mosaic block, you need some bamboo slabs. Two of those will create one of these. And then as for trapdoors, fences, fence gates, it's all business as usual with the crafting recipes. And of course, you can make the raft and a raft with a chest, the same recipe as your regular boats. However, they do indeed look very different. But if we look at the hitboxes for them, the hitboxes look to be the same size. So they're going to behave like regular boats, it would seem. I recently learned if I punch towards the camera, I accidentally hit the panda when I'm in a boat with it. Or should I say a raft? Yes, a raft it is indeed. Aesthetically exciting, but functionally the same as a boat. A couple of interesting notes about the bamboo block. It can't be used to compost, but it can be used as fuel. However, not the bamboo mosaic. That won't be accepted. As you will see, these blocks are flammable. Uh, the fire is spreading and eventually it will destroy the blocks too. And now it's all gone. So the question of blast resistance. Um, there you go. It's a little bit more blast resistant than the chiseled bookshelf. With new blocks do indeed come new sounds and actually three new categories of sound. There are overworld wood types, nether wood types, and then in a category of its own the bamboo. And of course they come with many more sounds than just placing like walking on the blocks too. Next up, the camel, and I believe the only place in the world this spawns is in a desert village and it's next to the centre where the well is. Every time I've teleported to one of these, there's always been a camel. Now the camel doesn't actually need taming. I know I'm in creative, but in survival you can just basically hop right onto it. And as you'll see down the bottom here, it has 16 hearts of health, which is 32 hit points. Now, if you've got a saddle, you can put it straight onto the camel and then it gets a new texture, which looks awesome. And if you shift click on the camel, you can open up its inventory or lack of, but here you can unequip and re-equip the saddle. Oh, and it's doing its sitting animation. I'm trying to give you all the details, but dong, aren't these things just so darn cute? My favorite thing has to be those wiggling ears. They are just amazing. But as you might know, this thing is rideable by two players at a time. And it looks like we're having some technical issues here, sadly. But hurrah, I've been able to overcome them. And because my other camera account isn't moving, it looks ridiculously derpy on the back there. But dang, there you go. A rideable mob for two players. Pretty cool, right? Oh, and by the way, when you're on the back, like you can't really do anything. And this is the view, just the back of the head of uh, the other player. Now, if you don't have a saddle on a camel, you can still get on it, but then you won't have any control over where it goes and what it wants to do. So if it sits down like this, which it will do from time to time, you'll need a saddle to get it moving. And its movement speed is always consistent, but as you might have heard, it has an ability called dash. If I tap spacebar, you see that we go forward a little bit. If I hold it down for a little bit longer, then we go a little bit further. And if you look at the dash bar, there's like a sweet spot on the right just before it turns orange. I think that's where you can get the longest dash if you time it correctly. And it has a cooldown, if you can't tell. It changes colour slightly. It's not the clearest, but the cooldown is always the same, regardless of how far you actually dash. It's also been stated that hostile mobs can't reach you when you're on a camel. This seems to be true. Let's find out if it's the same with a creeper. No, it's not. Oh, I've died. Another amazing feature of the camel is its ability to go over fences, but not when they're too tall. If they're one tall, you can hop straight over. 
There's a moment of illusion here where the head of the camel goes through the fence. This is because of its hitbox. So fun fact, you can't punch a camel in the face in Minecraft. And don't try that in real life either. Now another trick for learning about these mobs is to grab their MBT data to look for any secrets. And there isn't any that I could find. It does have a temper tag. However, when you strike the camel, it never strikes back. It also has a gazing cooldown and then a panic mode, which I think is a reaction to being hit. And then it has a sitting tag for when it does this wonderful animation and decides to sit down. Now you might have heard you can breed them with cactus, but they do indeed take damage on cactus. Anyways, get two of them together, give them some cactus, they'll rub necks and make a baby. Ah, oh, look at it, isn't it so adorable? And my opinion, I think these camels are fantastic. I love their shape, their animations, their derpiness. And they bring something a little new with the dash ability and the fact that two players can ride them. Perhaps the one thing that's missing at the moment is a drop. All you get is a tiny bit of XP. So next up, my friends, it is time for the hanging signs. And yes, as you can see, it works with dyes and glowing ink. But as the sign says, you have less space to work with than before, just like eight regular characters. But you still do have your four lines of text. And as you might know, there are three variations. So we have the chains here hanging from a fence post, and then we have the one that goes off the side of a block. The chains hanging from fence posts can be placed like in a variety of different angles, which looks really good. But this one over here is a little bit more limited. Also, those bamboo textures are amazing. And as for the ones hanging from full blocks, they don't have as much rotation as the ones hanging from fence posts. Oh, and they have amazing little icons inside of the menu too. Now, when it comes to crafting, it's pretty straightforward. You've got stripped logs and then you've got some chains at the top. However, with bamboo, there is no log equivalent, right? So it's just bamboo planks. You also get six of them each time, but with bamboo, you only get two. And despite having chains in them, you can use them as fuel in a furnace. Now, there's also one way to place these that mean that they can float, and that is when you put them on the side of a block. If you go ahead and remove the block that it's attached to, it's actually free to just float in the world. And let me make it clear that's not for these two types, just the type over here. And these are such really well-designed shapes. I'm sure your imagination is going wild for details of all the things that you could do with these. It is a really nice addition, but I do think the limited amount of text might hold it back from its intended purpose, which is to help you add more storytelling and lore to your world. So now on to 1.19.3, and do you notice something different here in the menu? There is now an accessibility setting for the menu panorama speed. So if we speed it up, the background here moves a little faster. And if we slow it down, it moves a little slower, and the default is 100%. Here is a little known feature that was broken when working with inventories. If you hold down your throw item key, it whizzes all of them out like that, which previously only worked from the inventory screen like so. Here's what will be potentially a controversial one for those of you that like to build mob farms. Mobs can spawn on scaffolding, which is kind of counterintuitive to the normal rules for mobs spawning on blocks. As a 1.19.3, they won't be able to spawn on scaffolding. There is also a lot of changes to mob AI. Supposedly, frogs will be better at not jumping into hazardous holes. The LA mob has also been tweaked a lot, both its behavior and animations, to be much more consistent with the Bedrock edition of the game. And if you're aware of the screaming goat variant of a goat, you can now breed a regular one with a screaming goat, and you'll have a chance of getting a screaming goat baby. And if you use a data pack to make custom crafting recipes, you can now assign them a category that they can appear in on the side here. There are also new splashes that will appear over the Minecraft logo. These include, you are valid, I'm glad you're here, you are welcome here, your gender is valid, contains infinite genders. There are also some changes to chat, including the removal of chat preview, and also some of those warning signs next to messages will no longer be displayed, making it much cleaner to read. When it comes to technical changes, there's a whole new system called Feature Flags. This is the way the game communicates what data packs are being used inside of a world. And so if you want to use these experimental packs on a server, there's now some options in the server settings file. And as it says here, data packs discovered after world creation will be disabled if they require features that are not enabled for loaded world. And you can see here it goes into a lot more detail. This article is linked in the description box down below. 
So with this new approach, Mojang are able to continue developing 1.19 whilst bringing out the new features of 1.20. And I've got a feeling once we get used to it, it's going to be pretty good. But that's it from me this video. Of course, leave a like if you want to support the channel. And I'd love it if you checked out my Minecraft discussions playlist. I've been putting together some really interesting content lately, and you can find it all here in this playlist. But that's it from me. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.